So therefore, I will not cry this year. I will not sorrow this year. In the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your voices and begin to appreciate his grace and mercies over this year? Begin to thank him. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Maka patana matela kotoyadash. Me para da 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 ba talago sepana. Thank you, Jehovah. You are faithful. You are merciful. You are mighty. You are all powerful. There is no like you, Jesus. Worthy are you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we give thanks. Lift up those hands, Father. We want to thank you. Thank you for this year we have entered. Thank you for the months of this year. They are already ticking and moving. And Lord, we know as they are ticking and moving, your glory is also moving with us. Thank you because we will not be in the camp of those that will cry this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, if we be willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Father, we decree and declare that the good of this land is our portion. The sorrow and the pain and affliction of this land can never be our portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. As they look up unto the Lord, their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed. Shame can never be our portion. Disgrace will never be our portion. In the name of Jesus. We are moving forward on all sides. In Jesus' precious name we declare. Can I hear the loudest and the loudest? Amen. Come with me this evening to Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 7. Hallelujah. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 7. As we keep on standing. Praise God. As we arrived last night from local jail, I started flipping through my phone into this morning. I started seeing different posts of testimony being sent to our various platforms. I intended for what they want to ask, but I had no time today. I didn't know it was all we were coming in to uh, Suleja. You can remember between Zuba and Suleja, Pastor Tan noticed. I said, Ah, rain fell heavily here. I said, How? And I actually looked out just after Zuba there, ponds of water, water. No, no, that the time we left Lokoja, it rained heavily. Skipped Abuja and came to the boundary of Ninja. They said it rained heavily yesterday in Suleja. As Lokoja people were celebrating that it has never happened like that before, it's a prophetic thing to what the Lord did because uh, I, I was privileged to be in the team of my spiritual father. We shared ourselves on the day we went out for prophetic action. I was in the team that joined him to go right in the confluence where River Ninja, River Benue, they meet. There's a little island there. We had to come out in the river and climb the island. Some things we saw there are things Mount can't explain. You will know the desperation of evil in this nation. We have the very filtered human beings in the confluence to rule the nation. Another group that went to another mountain, they came with names of people they nailed on trees in the mountain. Full leather they used in packing all those names. One of them, they wrote, I learned they wrote Mary Mohammed. And they said what that means is that a Mohammed is targeting a Christian sister known as Mary. He had to nail her there. To be making enchantment for Mary to be confused and backslide and marry, her, marry him. That, that is what they do. Now, that is not my focus. But that ray, and I asked as they were sending text messages everywhere, local journey, they were celebrating it everywhere. It came to me why did he skip Abuja and came to fall in Suleja, especially the boundary of Zuba? And the Lord said, Lokoja, Kogi State, and Ninja State, they are the strongholds that rule Nigeria. And the Lord said, the siege of the enemy over Nigeria is broken. So I'm so glad that 
they, they were break. I, I thought we were the only one from Mina that went. Many came from Sunija as well that went. I decree and then declare that with the connection we have received, with the privilege of going with my spiritual father to the heart of the confluence, I speak that every evil authority that operates from Niger State to afflict the church and to afflict the land, I decree they will not survive in the name of Jesus Christ. They will not survive in the name of Jesus. Say with me, my father, my father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we cause disaster in the camp of the wicked. They will not survive this season. Their reign of terror cannot continue. Go ahead and begin to decree in the name of Jesus. They will not survive this season and their reign of terror cannot con their reign of terror cannot continue. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. It was a tough program to embark on. At the end of the day, every one of us, we are swimming with great joy that the Lord has done something. I just pray that the Lord will extend the testimonies to all of us in this land. That evil will collapse on their own. The program was drawn as a January. As a January. As soon as we came back from prayer quick, I traveled on behalf of MPN to Lagos. My spiritual brother called me and said, we are going to have such program. And the three dates we are given, three. I have them on my phone. But somehow, it was led to choose these dates we went for. It was led to choose these dates we went for. And so, on the program that was drawn out, a particular day was marked for prophetic action to go to these places I made mention of. Not knowing that that same day was the day that the attack of Igala will be corroded. And I asked myself, are these mere coincidences? They are not. We decree and declare that what God did in Lokoja, in the camp of the wicked, suffered disaster. Amen. Your amen is very nice. May the camp of the wicked suffer disaster. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 7. I want us to read together Zephaniah chapter 3, verse number 7 of Zephaniah 3. He said, And the coast shall be for the remnants of the house of Judah. Can I hear amen? amen. And the, so, yes, sorry, 2 7. I've mentioned it before. I didn't know I mentioned 3. 2 7, and it was displayed. Why is it taken off? Yes, 2 7, sorry. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of of Judah. They shall feed thereupon in the houses of Escalon. Shall they lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. I welcome you once again to our month of divine visitation where God will give us divine attention. I therefore decree that in any area in your life and your family, you need a visitation. May that visitation be unhindered. May that visitation be unhindered. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand and shout with me, my father, my father. By divine visitation, I decree and I declare the barriers over my life are destroyed. Resistance of the wicked, they are destroyed. In the name of Jesus, this is my season of divine visitation. Shout it louder, this is my season of divine visitation. This is my season of divine visitation. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against me. Go ahead once more and prophesy to yourself. 
This is my season of divine visitation. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against me. Le kaparango rakodono dodonos. Yi kwa pa koto baba koto lega. Ezule de le zule de le zule de le zule de. Yi poro koto raba kore de 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 de. Rakata rakata rakata. And pa 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 rando robos. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus name. He said when there is a visitation, the first thing he said they shall be rest. That word there, he said, they shall feed their upon the houses of Escalon and they shall lie down in the evening. It means they shall be rest. I decree that every tension that has surrounded you into this year, the tensions are destroyed. Amen. Every tension of the enemy in order to disorganize you. In fact, when some tensions were trying to mount up concerning this meeting we just came back from, I told someone my major focus in this meeting is what God wants to do. I knew something was about to happen. <laughs> Pastor Ita can testify. He said, This program, Kai, the enemy is just angry. It was so strange. Many oppositions. Someone that drove his car down, beautiful car and everything, right there. The car had an accident. Thank God it was a minor one. Many resistance. What gives us joy with the little experiences we've had in battle is that the more there are battles, the more there are resistance here and there, and the more you are able to focus, the higher the testimony. I speak to someone here today. In the midst of the stress you have gone through, may the Lord give you a testimony that will wipe away the plagues of your stress in the name of Jesus. In the multiplicities of your battle, may the Lord give you a testimony that will swallow the pains of your battle. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Look at what is added. He said, and the Lord shall turn away their captivity. Every visitation ends captivity. No matter how you explain God's visitation, the evidences of the visitation is the glory. I decree today that before the end of this month, may God give you evidences. May yokes be broken your life. May yokes be broken your family. May that thing that has caused a hindrance for years be taken away. In the name of Jesus! Somebody shout, this is my season of divine visitation. Say it louder with authority, this is my season of divine visitation. Say with boldness, this is my season of divine visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ, I shall have rest. I shall have peace. Tension shall be knocked off. Barriers shall be broken. Captivity shall be shattered. In the name of Jesus so shall it be. In Jesus precious name we pray. Thank you Lord. In Jesus mighty name. There's a community in the next three months the Lord said there shall be visitation of God over that community. The Lord said because their season of harvest has come they are long awaited Redemption program has been activated. I hear God says, All tasks will expire in that community. Amen. Custodians of evil, some will surrender, while some will die in order for others to be rescued. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray whoever represents that community here. Let your mercy through that person reach out to others. Amen. The Lord said, affliction has been so much intensified in that community that the innocent one has been dealt with so badly in that community. The Lord said, the cry of their pains has come before him. That the wicked ones will pay for the affliction they have given to the innocent ones. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. And amen. Please be seated. 
Hallelujah. Turn with me quickly as you have your seat to Revelations. We want to go back to the series we skipped. Um, last week, we began on dealing with the aspect of um, the subject titled Dealing with um, Battle Complications. Dealing with Battle Complications. Especially this period we are is a period of great death of knowledge in order for you to fight rightly. I was going through a documentary I think yesterday or two days ago you know they trying to extreme what happened in World War One and how it started what happened in World War Two and how it started and they brought a lot of indices a lot of indications that shows that the Russian Ukraine situation is a pointer to another world war. But somehow, a prophecy is still hanging that there is going to be a World War III. But before the World War III, the rapture will take place. Men will see it as World War III, but in the Bible, it's called the Armageddon War. So we are still waiting to test the prophecy. Could it be before or after the world war? Will he actually tally? Will he actually tally? That is not so much important. The important aspect here is the Revelation 11, which tallies with dealing with complications of battles. Revelation 11, I mean 12, Revelation 12, verses 11 and 12, Revelation 12, verses 11 and 12. He said, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. Verse 12. Can we read verse 12 together? I want to go. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So take note of that word, that last statement, underline it in your Bible, you know, highlight it in your device, knowing that his time is short. May I say this that spiritual warfare they are not done randomly, they are done with a target. Jesus Christ said the thief does not come but to steal, to kill, and so, so there, there is a target, there is a focus of every battle. The Bible says there is there, there is this rural lion, you know, who the devil is going about seeking for whom he would do. So his roaring is not the problem. It's not his focus. He didn't just want to run ah, I'm around or so for this. No, his roaring is to focus on devouring. So his roaring is not, it's not just to make you afraid, but to devour. In spiritual warfare, battles are done with precision. Battles are done to target something. Battles are not done in random. No. And that is why in spiritual warfare, there are no coincidences. Things are deliberately arranged to happen. Therefore, nothing happens physically without a spiritual programming. Whatever happens now, even this Ukraine-Russia situation has been projected a long time ago in the spirit realm. The number of people that will die, the number of people that will go through frustration have been mapped out in the spirit realm. I want to share a story with you here of uh, this, this is the second bomb blast or so that took place in Abuja. It happened in Yanya Air Rufai Park where you have the long buses of Air Rufai. As I then we were using Migri Hotel and that just the entrance to Migri Hotel. So we had all the information of how it happened. Well, the most important sensitive thing that portrays is that spiritual things, I mean, things that happen like that are more spiritual than the physical. It was a testimony of a sister called Sister Kate. I've explained, share a testimony here with you, several. 
she had a dream months before that time. A date was given to her. I think February something, I forgot. A date was given to her. And the way that date was given to her in her dream is like a date of death. She became scared and shared with her brother. So they started having night vigil on four every day all through. And as the day approached, they intensified the vigil. The very day the Boko Haram invaded that place, planted bombs in that bus, and the team blasted and killed many innocent persons. That exactly happened to be the bus this sister do take to her work. In fact, when she comes out of her house, she doesn't miss the first bus, and that is the first bus. So as soon as the thing happened, people started calling her everywhere. Sister Kate Boss had been blasted. Sister Kate Boss. They started calling and calling and calling and calling, not knowing that she was not in the bus. And because she was not responding, people became more scared. What happened? Because a date was given to her much before then she saw in her dream. When that day approached, she and her brother prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed till 3 a.m. in the morning. And after that, she slept off. She couldn't wake up till about 8, I mean after 8 in the morning. Instead of 6 a.m., she normally rushed out. As she woke up, she opened her phone. She had missed the bus. She was panicking to get ready. Phone, I rang. And when she picked her phone, she discovered she had had several missed calls from her office, from her relatives. And when she asked, say you survived it? She said, what did I survive? What happened? They said, your boss! Many people died! Others that are still breathing, they are not sure they will survive it. So which means, that bomb blast, yes, Boko Haram caused it. It was planned by Satan months before it was executed. No evil happens physically without a spiritual conception for days or months. No good thing also come without a spiritual arrangement for the breakthrough to come. Lift up your hand above your head. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it louder in the mighty name of Jesus. I am not a candidate of accidents because God has deliberately positioned me. No power can catch me. I am unpredictable. I am a mystery in the hands of Jehovah. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Now the Bible said Satan has come down with a great rod, knowing that his time is short. It therefore shows that the more shorter the time is, the more intensified spiritual battle we become. The more we get closer to the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ, the more we get closer to the time he will come back again the more battles we increase. Please get that. Complications of battles, therefore, means, like we had defined the other time, therefore means when battles are becoming overwhelming. When your capacity to prevail over battles is being shaken, it shows that there are complications. You see, when the body system is not able to manage you know a head condition it is said the head condition is complicated even when the person is going through treatment complications of battle is when your capacity is no longer managing the battles that are around you and the reason why we need to go back to this depth of the reality of spiritual warfare is for us to know that we are in a time that is getting shorter so just understanding spiritual warfare will intensify. The more shorter the time, the more there will be aggressiveness from the pit of hell against humanity. Most especially against those who are redeemed. Where will the aggression be? Aggression against prayer life. Aggression against the work of the Lord. Aggression against you know, the activities of the kingdom. The more there will be battle. But I have a great news in the midst of the tensions of battles that will be around. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. That is the period we are now. The darkness shall cover the earth, 
and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to the, to, the, to the light and kings to the brightness of the rising. So what is saying? In a situation that we will be finding ourselves from time to time, the saints will be the answer and the hope of the world. So if that is so, you must not live in complication of battle. Because there are battles. Like I just told you, we just came back from Lokoja. But why were we in Lokoja? On behalf of Nigeria. Why did it take all those risks? I could see my spiritual father drove, you know, he was carried in a very powerful fine jeep to the river. But the jeep can't enter inside the river. He sat in the same canoe with me. Kenu that does not defeat him at all. He sat in the king. Why? In order to take a risk to fight the battles that are not his, but the battles of the land. I was sitting right by his side. I kept on watching how he was so excited. As if he was going for something, a ceremony, or something like that. I said, wow. Not five minutes thing, long into deep waters. If I could remember somebody say, Ah, we are going to enter Kenu. I said, Yes. He said, But he didn't tell us in advance. I said, Ah, he doesn't mean. He said, ah, well, What would have known the more prayer to pray? I said, It's the same thing. <laughs> I said, You don't know how to swim? He kept quiet. <laughs> I remember when I went to Bonnie Peter's side, when you'll be on a high sea. You look this way, deep forest, and something will tell you, do you know what is the hippopotamus? You look on this right, deep forest, something will tell you, do you know what is the a big boar? Risk being taken in order to deal with the battle of the times we are. If that is the season we are, below, you need to be free so that you can fight such battle. Amen. All right, let me illustrate something. I don't know how fast this. I just need young young persons. Uh, yes, come. Let me get someone else. Uh, keyboardist, yes, the keyboardist. Uh, come. I need two seats. Two seats. Or well, let's demonstrate it here. I'm not sure here is too bad for you to sit down. No, just come this way. Come and sit down. Come, come, come. Two of you sit down. Let me see who is who is taller amongst them. Just stand up. Let me see. Ah, this guy, look. He even pointed and said, him. Two of you sit down. So you that have much capacity, you are going to help us. I think the camera is not seeing you very well. Come this way. Just come this way. Sorry. Sit here. Sit here. All right. You can see them very well. Okay. You that have more muzu, as you are sitting, carry him up. Make sure he stand. Of sit down. Carry him up. Make sure he stand. I'm just saying, just follow him. <laughs> I'm not saying you stand. Make sure he's the one carrying you to stand. Is it possible? Okay, let's try. Okay, now you stand up. You stay there. Carry him. Below, you can't win. All that battle, when the battle around you is complicated. Go and see them. It's not possible. When in a season of complication of battles, then you don't need to, you know, when in the season of severe battle, then you don't need to complicate your own. He said, the devil knows at the time we are. It's a short time. He has come with a great loss. This is the season of battles of nations. That personal battle, you must come out of it. Because the crown you will be given when you get to heaven is not a crown of personal breakthrough. It's a crown of the breakthroughs that others go through you. Look at the, the rejoicing. They are rejoicing. Look at that. They are, so, they are celebrating. They know something has happened. Because such heavy rain has never come in much like that. 
Lift up your right hand above your head. I decree and declare on your behalf that in the mighty name of Jesus, every invisible hope that is complicating matters around you in order to distract you, not to be a blessing to others, we damage that evil hope. Somebody shout with me, I am a blessing to my world. I have an assignment to my generation. I cannot be stagnated. In the name of Jesus, I am prevailing on behalf of others, on behalf of my family, on behalf of the land. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if you faint in the days of adversities, your strength is small. Proverbs 24 verse 10. Your strength is small. A small strength is a small strength when you don't have the capacity to prevail. You will prevail. I said you will prevail. I said you will prevail. So one of the reasons why battles will be intensified in this season is because we are having a short time. Please understand that. The time is really short. We are having a short time. We are getting closer to where we are going to than where we are coming from. Hallelujah. Another reason why battles are intensified in this season is because of the focus of the enemy. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 it said, and right from the days of John the Baptist until now. You can imagine when Jesus made this statement. Until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violence take it by force. What he's saying, right from the time, Satan got the understanding that there is redemption for man. He became wild against man. He became more angry against man. All he knows about man is to cause disaster against man. So, two things. The shorter the time, intensity of battle. Because of the hatred of the enemy for the redeemed. For those who have gotten the answers to give to humanity through Christ. There is intensity of battles. Please get these two things. And have understood these two things. How do you go to win the battles? How do you go to do exploit and to help the land and help others? Number one, you must understand what is called dealing with the sources of battles. That was where we stopped two weeks ago. Dealing with the sources of battles. You must check around you. What kind of battle am I fighting? Am I fighting a battle because I'm going all out to be an instrument to help someone, to help my family? Or I'm going through battle because there are some things... I have not dealt with around my life. We say you must understand the sources of battles. Define the battles that are around you. Define it. Don't pray random prayer. Deal with what is dealing with you. So there are three sources of battles. I explained the other time. Number one, we say there is what is called family line battle. If you come from a family where there are battles that are rooted in causes, that are rooted with altars, that are rooted with a household wickedness, known as the strong power of a family, battles around you could be complicated. Why? The forces responsible for such things, they know you are a blessing. They know where you are going to. They know God's intention for your life. And for them to slow you down, they, all they need to do is to go through what is already there. They don't initiate a new thing. To go through what is already there and to give you some resistance. And that is why, beloved, this is the season you must deal with what is dealing with you in the family line you come from. I've explained it much the other time, and I can't stop talking about it. There are people with great strength today who find themselves in complications of battles, not because they are not prayerful, not because they don't love the Lord, but because of the kind of family they come from. Because of the kind of battles in the family line they come from. I speak to you today. Every battle that is hidden in your family, be crushed for your sake. Amen. I said be crushed for your sake. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Another source of battle that could make battles to be complicated is known as environmental battle, environmental warfare. Where you reside where you do your business or where you work, where you have in your, your, your livelihood, where you come from. These three locations 
of your environment determines your spiritual capacity. I repeat again, where you reside, where you work or do your business, or where you get your means of income or sustenance, and number three, where you come from. Where you come from is known as the place of your nativity. If these three areas are having complication of warfare against you, your spiritual productivity will be retarded. When your environment is closed up against you because there is an invisible hand working against that environment or there is a cause in that environment that is fighting everybody, you have spiritual capacity but it's not showing, not because it's your fault. I once shared with you a brother some years ago who attended a meeting and it was a prayer meeting and they talked all about the efficacy of prayer. He was so trained and excited, praying in tongues, coming home. And as he got home, he couldn't have time to eat. It was late when he came from the program. He just went straight into praying. He prayed till 11 p.m., getting to 12 a.m. After 12 a.m. to 1 a.m., he became exhausted and he decided, well, let me sleep. I've prayed enough. On trying to close his eyes, he silly shook. He heard it and he saw it. He had guru. No, you don't want that. I've been here. What could be that? There's no, there's no sign of rewind. Must my silly shake? As he was contemplating, he had a voice of the Holy Spirit, and the voice said, That is the enemy. As soon as he heard that, he got up because he was already enveloped in the presence of God. There's one thing I know when the Holy Spirit envelops you thickly, it does not tolerate wickedness. The more evil is discovered, the more the Holy Spirit tears up that anger within you to fight. He stood up and went into aggressive praying for the next 40 minutes to one hour. The next thing he had was a heavy force that fell from his ceiling outside his door. Rushing to open the door. As he opened the door, guess who he saw? I've said it before here, the landlady. As he saw the landlady, he screamed. You must say, please don't shout. I have been doing it before. I don't keep people. But I belong to a coven where you must donate something to survive. I made a pledge and I donated the glory of all my tenants. That anyone that enters my house as a tenant can never progress to build his own house. I have been doing it for years. Every night I must go through the ceiling of my tenants. And collect their glory and take to the coven. But as I came to yours today, I don't know what happened. Smoke came over everywhere. And something pulled me down from the ceiling. I decree on your behalf today. Whatever is fighting and dragging your environment from you, the eternal has expired. So in dealing with complications of battles, define the battles you are fighting. Are you fighting a battle from your family? Or you are fighting a battle from the environment that you reside. Or you are fighting a battle from the environment where you do business. Or you are fighting a battle from the place where you walk. I heard this story of a woman who was so tough in her place of work. She was not that wicked. She was not wicked at all. But she was tough against evil. She wouldn't compromise and she wouldn't want you to tamper with government procedures under her and they nicknamed her Margaret Thatcher. So they became so angry. And they said, what do we do concerning this woman? They not devise an idea because they've used it to others before and it worked on them. And the idea that came to them is let us attack her. Let us attack her head when we attack her health. We will not kill her. She will still be the boss, but unable to come to the office. Let's give her a stroke. So that from her house, she will be giving the relatives, will be happy to manipulate it and eat in the morning. And so they perfected everything, how they will go about it. They went somewhere, got a charm, gave it to somebody that always attend to her office, the cleaner, I be the messenger or so, that she should, put, she should put something on the woman's seat before the woman arrives in the morning. And the man did it. At about 10 a.m., he came to greet Madame to see if anything has happened because they say when the thing is activated, Madame will scream and fall and she will have a, a one-sided stroke. 
He came at 10 a.m. to greet madame. Madame was still lively and healthy. She went back. I came to it, no, the same thing. When he got to the time they said, the time I elapsed, he became scared. Greeted Madame several. Madame was, what kind of greeting is this? How many times will you greet me today? Madame didn't know that she was sitting on evil that would have made her have stroke. At the end of the day, Madame got up that morning, dressed up, I mean, picked her things, I moved out. The same man came and rushed to be sure whether Madame actually sat on that thing. He, he told Madame when he was confessing, he said, I look at your clothes. The black substance was still there. And Madame left. One week, two weeks, nothing happened to Madame. A few weeks later, Madame that's supposed to have died from the head office, Madame was promoted. And this young man concluded that they've been doing this thing before. A lot have been affected. But according to the order of the charm, once you do it and your target is missed, it will come to you. So you had to go to Madame and confess all of these things. Madame didn't know what happened. I decree and declare today that every fight against you from your environment, that fight is crushed. <laughs> Say it louder with me, my father, my father. Every battle in my environment. Say it louder, every battle in my environment. I destroy them by fire. Every evil target from my environment against my existence, they are receive fire. Go ahead and begin to decree. Let them receive fire. Kabala ta da 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 da. Let them receive fire, fire, fire. Palatola kabaranda radabosh. Zuke teke pota makato lava. Reke bate reke da 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 dos. Shama gabate reke de bo broda. Let them receive fire in the name of Jesus Christ. The next source of battle, let's quickly read Isaiah quickly, Isaiah 54. Hallelujah. You will prevail. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. You will prevail over your battles. Isaiah 54 from verse 14. I want us to read together. I want to go. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror. For it shall not come nigh thee. Hallelujah. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. When you read on, it's so promising, so powerful, and that is our covenant in him. But let's look at where it all started. In righteousness, somebody shout righteousness. In righteousness shall thou be established. Spiritual stamina to prevail against complication of battle begins from righteousness. Right living in Christ. So, the next source of battle is known as personal battles. Personal battles are not battles that are from your family. They are not battles from your environment. But they are battles that are within you. Such battles that are within you are connected to you. So, if the battle will be won, it has nothing to do with Satan. If the battle will be won, it has nothing to do with the family you come from. If the battle is to be won, it has nothing to do with your environment. If the battle is to be won, it has a lot to do with your stand with God. I've seen many who have complicated battles around them because of their lifestyle. I've seen many who have complicated battles around them because there are things in them they don't want to fight and do away with. In righteousness shall thou be established. Without living right, you are not doing God a favor. It's for your safety and for your good. The Bible says somewhere in this Psalm 34, so 
He said, the angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear God. The fear of God, you are not helping God, you are helping yourself. To live right, to be conscious of holiness, to be conscious of living right, you are not doing God a favor, I repeat, you are helping yourself. To live a, a life of forgiveness, a life of kingdom principles, a life of righteousness. This is what God said I should do. It is for your good. You are not helping anybody. Many do not understand that spiritual warfare could be complicated when your life is not right. And some think they can play the fast one that demons they don't see. Who told you? Demons they see. They see. Especially in this season where there are teachings of the abuse of grace. That even when you sin, grace covers you. It's not true. It is not true. There's no place that says even when you sin, grace still covers you. It's a lie. It's not true. You are not expected to sin, yes. You, so, if you are not expected to sin, you must power the capacity God has given to you to fight sin. Sin is an enemy, it's a monster. You must fight it. The sin you don't fight fights you. Amen? In righteousness, shall that be. So, personal battles are battles that are on your life because of you. In deliverance, we call it a broken edge attack. It is not from God. It's not because Satan is powerful, but because you gave him room. Broken edge attack is Satan borrowing your hand to dig a grave and say, walk into it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. He said, who so breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Who so breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall do what? Your hedge there represents divine protection. Like I said in Psalm 34 verse 7, he said, the angels of God encamp around the bad day that fear the Lord. So you have angelic protection around you. And that angelic protection cannot be removed by Satan. can only be removed through you. So therefore, in order to deal with personal battles, number one, there must be from time to time personal self-examination. That is the safest way. People don't go on personal retreat again to have a self-check. People go on personal retreat to pray a problem. To bomb God about situation. Can't 10 people go to mountains and ask them, why are you going to the mountain? They will tell you, we have a matter God must solve. No one goes to mountain because he wants to see the face of God again. No one has personal fasting and prayer because he wants to seek the face of God to have stamina in God. But there are situations he wants to. The only few that still seek him because they just desire him. I speak to you today that every garment of darkness that you are struggling with in your life be removed. Be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. So when it comes to passing a battle, number one, you must check what are the things I am still struggling with. Please clear them on time. We don't have time. Number two, what are the things that are working against my relationship with people? Am I having struggle in relating with people? Because one of the reasons why Satan will make you have problems with people is to implicate you so that it will complicate your battles. By implicating you what it does, is to build up unforgiveness and bitterness inside of you. And the moment there's unforgiveness, the moment there's bitterness inside of you, you cannot win any battle. 
Amen. You can't win any battle. So number one, check what am I struggling with? Part of what you are struggling with could be a kind of habit. A kind of behavioral pattern that you have evil spirit. You know, it has come to a time people now spiritualize some behavioral pattern. They have anger. They not turn it as Holy Ghost anger. They have anger problems. Small thing they are provoked. They share the screen. They do everything. At the end, they tell you it's Holy Ghost anger. They are, mm -mm, check them. They have been like that. Even when they got born again, they couldn't deal with that thing. Moses tried it. He lost the kingdom. He lost his place. He tried it. The thing was following him. As grace and anointing came upon him, he didn't see check. The way I talk now. Is it similar the way I talk those days when I was in the house of the Egyptians, when I was growing up, when I killed somebody? But one day, God said, go and speak to the people. And speak to the rock. I will bring water out of the rock. And they got, they got angry. And he struck once, struck twice. In another occasion, he burned the golden calf. Gave them to drink. And the Lord said, Moses, he said, no. You will see the promise now. You will not enter. Please look at your neighbor. Don't call that weakness as a spiritual dimension. It's a bondage. Break it. There are still some that find it difficult to come out straight to say something. They, they twist it. They have been like that. When they were growing up, ah! when, when something happened, you ask them, they will say stories and stories. At the end of it, they are telling lies. And now they are still born again. They can't come out straight to say yes or no. They still twist it. And do you know what they now call it now in the Holy Ghost? You know, you have to walk in wisdom, you know, diplomacy. And it's lies. That is how they live their life. I can't imagine young, long ago as a young person, a very prominent person in, in the work of God, then you don't have GSM, you have landline, full rank. He said, I'm sure it's this person that is calling. Please help me pick and tell the person I'm not around. I said, eh? He said, please hurry, hurry up, hurry up. Hello? And actually it was the man of God. Uh, sorry, he, 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 he's, I think he's quite busy to attend to you, though he's around there. Yeah. He said, did I tell you to say that? I said, you, you don't want me. You are busy. At least I still help you. You are busy. Your hand is not available. <laughs> you are busy. He said, no. I said, but this is lie. The church I grew up from, when you tell lies, they will give you back seat. They will suspend you. He said, no, that is wisdom. Did Abraham not tell lies? This is a prominent servant of God. Those days saying this. I was still a young person. You know, I've never started the ministry then. You can imagine. Let's assume I never had a foundation. I will believe that to tell lies smartly as a child of God is normal. I mean, when I check that person's life, he has been a liar from childhood. So as he grew up in Christianity, no need to wisdom, diplomacy, no spirit of lying. Jesus Christ said, You are like your father, Satan, and he is the father of all liars. Check what are those things that are feeding your enemies? Personal weaknesses, you excuse, they feed your enemy to be fatter than you in battles. Personal weaknesses, you give explanation for. They are feeding your enemies to have more muzzles against you. Please tell your neighbor, stop feeding your enemies. Deal with that anger in your family line. Deal with that anger that you grew up with. Deal with, the, deal with that lies. That lies twisting of words. Hallelujah. So deal with those personal weaknesses. Deal with those things you know they are beseeching you. Those things you know they are eating you. You will lose battles. Not in this time we are. The colleen that you are dragging space with in the office. When they tell you the altar he prepared himself. To come and take that space with you. And you that has all that it takes. To undo their wickedness. You are struggling because of personal 
sin that the enemy has used to rob you. This is in the Lord said I should tell us. We should weigh this in two balances. Number one, what will it profit me when I live in spiritual weaknesses all through my life? Number two, what would I have gained if I've made up my mind long before now to live right and to live prayerful in my life? The Lord said, wait the two. It is a disaster when you don't put yourself together in battle. You have already lost every battle before they arrive. There are consistent attacks going on in people's lives, not because the enemy is too strong, but because the enemies they are holding on something. Beloved, in the battle of this season we are, stop allowing complications of battles. Put your hands on your head and say with me, my father, my father. I receive grace to move out of complications of battles. Say it louder, I receive grace to move out of complications of battles. I destroy satanic manipulations that are complicating battles around my life. Whatever is feeding my enemies, my actions and attitude, I destroy it by fire. Every spell cast against me and my environment to weaken my capacity for right living, I destroy the spell in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some years ago, a man of God, he has a very vibrant ministry now. Though it's long, I met him last. Almost about 16 years now. He was on the other side. He said why he was on the other side. They had different groups. That he belonged to the group that monitor Christianity and that does and arrange and does enchantment with others against them. And I asked him how. He said his own squad has different units. That his own unit specifically, he was assigned to select men of God and people who are vibrant in God. That that was his own assignment. That he goes right, that he can tell you as a day the names of every man of God in Mina. Every man of God. And that was why some years ago I was in my office here. They brought one that just uh, told me he's a convert. I said, okay, okay. So, someone that brought a man of God was introducing him to me. He said, I know him. I look at him. I said, where did you know me from? He said, are you not living in so -so so-and-so house? You want so-so-and-so car? And he described the color. He said, you always park your car like this in in your house. And there's a road like this. I I was surprised, but I just heard myself. With him, I said, eh. So, I'm among those he asked you to investigate. And the Holy Spirit says, pay more attention to be sure he has actually given his life to Christ. God just opened his mouth to say that. So this, my friend, said, what they do those days is to select names of Christians who are troublesome spiritually. He said, especially men of God that praise, that they have all their names on their list. Now what they do is to be making incantations on them. On the names. Incantations. And ask him, what does that incantation what does it represent? He said, to make them sin. So that they will be weak. All those most most say you are excusing, you are, you, are, you are a believer. Secretly. You still watch new film or new things on your phone. Those are the spells they are cast on you. It's not that way. You can't descend so low and go put your phone and be doing, doing those things, watching what leave you secretly and everything. Those are the spare they cast on you. It's a personal complicated battle to make sure you don't win. Put your hand on your head and say, every spare cast over my atmosphere to weaken my life. Receive fire. Go ahead and begin to declare the name of Jesus. 
in jesus mighty name Psalms 125, very quickly. Psalms 125, verse 3. Psalms 125, verse 3. Hallelujah. Psalms 125, verse 3. Are we there? Psalms 125, verse 3 said, For the rod of the wicked. Are you seeing it? For the rod of the wicked shall not rest on the lot of the righteous. Less the righteous put forth their hand unto iniquity. For a righteous person to commit sin, <laughs> know that it wasn't a day's job in the spirit realm. Spares and altars were raised. For a true child of God, to live in unrighteousness in his secret life, private life in his home. It's not just something he just woke up. I want to deliberately do something in flimsy atmosphere. And so please, since you know are implicative to your soul, don't take them for granted. The worst of it, don't give excuses. Stop giving excuses. Whatever you tolerate, you cannot terminate. James 4 verse 7. Resubmit yourself therefore to God. James 4 verse 7. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. So the devil you don't resist will not flee. The practical word resist the devil will flee from you. Is much more on the battle of righteousness. Not on the battle of finance. In fact, before they even hit your finance most time, they deal with your spiritual life first. They deal with your right living. They deal with your prayer life. They deal with, the, with your word life. To make sure when you read Bible, it's so empty in you. After they are through with those three locations, they not deal with the main thing they want to deal with. But they begin first from your life. You begin to experience some weaknesses in prayers. Begin to discover that you can't have stamina to pray. In fact, one of the ways you know that you are under attack when the interest for personal prayer is you are losing it. You do not pray today. Tomorrow you didn't have time to pray. And it's mama. <laughs> they are fighting you. Please, I encourage everyone, before this month of divine visitation ends, engage yourself personal uh, retreats. I say, oh Lord, search my life. Are things wrong spiritually? Help me to correct it. Please. We anymore. Look at what has happened in Ukraine now. People one day started running without even taking their bags or loads. In fact, which day I was in the bathroom while we were in this local jar, I just had the Holy Spirit. He said, do you think banks were still functioning when bombs were raining on Ukraine? I said, ah, Holy Spirit, banks are not working. He said, you answer, do you think? Say, hey. He said, okay. How will they spend their money? I said, ah, they must have withdrawn some cash. Approved. How much cash will they keep that will carry them? He said, some have millions in their bank accounts. But they were starving while they were. I learned a group of students for two days did not eat. They were not in the cold. They were in the freezing. They were in the freezing weather. Outside they slept. No place to live. Running for their life. Sometimes what we pursue at the expense of our spiritual life are things with second view. You just sleep off. Your spiritual life is the key. Consciously every day. Is prayer still a focus to you? When you go to bed, you are asleep five hours, six hours. Know that you travel. Know that you, you were so stressed during the Even some stress during the day, they are manipulative stress. 
You were manipulated to stress yourself and stress yourself out that when you not fall on the bed, you are a log of wood, and you fall like a log of wood on the bed, and even when they carry you with the bed, you can't even wake up. There are people like that too. You can't even wake up. You can't imagine someone was so stressed and was sitting on a table and they opened the drawer, pack everything. In the day, not night, pack everything and the person did not wake up. <laughs> was sleeping in the day under sun, not a seal, under sun. In the day, sun was entering that place. Don't sleep in. When they woke, I said, Who oh, packed this thing? They said, No, they just want to do you. Hey, one day, two days, one week, three weeks, one year, forever. They just calculate this guy. Yeah. That is left off. What kind of sleep is that? When you enter bed, 10 o'clock, 12, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., it is when you hear they shout on their speaker. You say, ah, they have broken all. What do you think is doing you? They have cast a spell on you. Spiritually. Yes, they say you sleep for eight hours. Spiritually, the moment you are cross five hours going to the night hour, they say where your body will move you. You wake up. You find yourself, you just wake up. You are the one that will feel, I still need to sleep. Go and find out for those who are spiritual and don't understand the place of prayer. That is why we check ourselves. We discover that we are sleeping beyond the normal expected spiritual ratio. We check ourselves. Is anything wrong? If you don't have a health challenge, you sleep six hours stretch. Going to the seventh hour, eight hours. Not that you are physically exhausted. And it has become every day day. Hey, go for spiritual checkup. They have injected something, either through food in the dream, or through physical food you have eaten. They have injected something. Some years ago, I went to minister to a family in area two. And I thought it was just uh, come and pray for us and we're experiencing some challenges. And that's I took them through the man, the woman, the daughters, through uh, family deliverance. You know, the Holy Spirit just dropped something in my mouth, which before them, that was in my line of prayers. We deal with demonic deposit through the food someone ate in the dream and so on and so forth. But somehow I found myself said, every food you physically ate that was contaminated to keep your spiritual life come out. Beloved, they were fasting. The man, the woman, the daughters vomited the same type of food. They did not eat a day before. A day before that day, they didn't eat that type of food. In fact, the man, when the man was throwing on, I saw the man looking. I said, ah. <sighs> he was looking. He was looking. And I didn't know why he was looking. I thought maybe he was surprised that they are throwing up at the same time. It was not finished. We were just standing and praising God. He says, I have a question. Is it possible to vomit what you don't eat? What you didn't eat? I said, I don't understand. You are the one that vomited it, not me. He said, is it possible to vomit what you did not eat? The wife said, that is true, sir. Is it possible in deliverance? Are there deliverance where you vomit something you did not eat? I said, I don't understand. They said, we are fasting. Not only we are fasting, this thing we saw that came out of us, we didn't eat it yesterday. Ah, personally, I became confused. And I said, I, said, I don't know. Did, did any of you, did you people together travel somewhere and eat a particular, um, this type of food somewhere? They said, no. It was when we were talking and debating and thinking where it could come. The man said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You know, I told the wife. Our house said we told that she would leave the following day. We actually true. Do you remember this was the food she cooked for us a day before she left? The man said yes. As soon as they said that, I said, okay, put your hand, which means we are not here true. Mention it. So so and so food we ate. Through our house said. On so so and so day. 
I was surprised. The one that came out was part one. They started again. I had to move very fast with water. Ooh. That is how wicked the world we are. There's some of you, you bought some food somewhere. Recently, they, 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 they had a video and documentary of some people who cook for people to eat. And they tell them the meat they are eating, they are dry bush meat. Not knowing that they were human beings. You, you didn't see it on social media? Human beings! And people trooping there to eat dry bush meat. I hope someone will not throw up here now. <laughs> Dry bush meat. And they say people queue during lunch hour. You even see big men go and wash plates to queue. Such place where you see big men that will even do their white food at home like this. What is this? And you see they carry plate and wash. And sit in a place that look like hot. Know that they have charmed them. This is fair. That food they are eating there, they are not normal food. Such food, you think it will be in the system of somebody and it will allow that person to pray? No. There are some people, any time they want to fast, that is when early in the morning their stomach will be paining them. If the church declare fast, Next thing we're going to have three days fasting and prayer from a Monday, from a Friday, malaria will come. To say this malaria, say we came the other time. Can't, I can't just fast, Pastor. I have malaria. Hey, it's a lie. It's the food you are eating that is telling your body you cannot do this thing or you can't drive us. Because when you do this thing, we'll be powerless, we'll run away. Tonight is the night of deliverance. God will give you your body, your head back to you. Stand to your feet. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called. That is why you are called Jehovah. What you say you will do. What to say. Oh yes. That is why. Hallelujah. That is why. That is why you are called. That is why you are called. Jehovah. That is why you are called. That is why you are called. Jehovah. What you say you will do. What you say you will do. Oh, yeah. That is what you will do. Hallelujah. That is why you are born. Oh, sign up. Oh, sign up. Let the rock of my salvation be a soul. Oh, sign Oh, one more time, Hosanna, 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 blessed be the Lord, oh, let the rock of my salvation be exalted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be Oh yes, let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Lift up your hands and say with me, my heavenly Father. Today I release my spirit, soul, and body as a living altar where a living sacrifice is being offered to the living God. Today I release my spirit, soul, and body that my body is a temple of God because the Holy Ghost
Jesus dwells in me. So therefore, I decree and I declare, I am a weapon of war. I am a battle axe in the hands of God. In the name of Jesus, I am winning battles of others. I am winning battles of nations. I am winning battles of my environment. I therefore decree and I declare that every siege against my life is broken in the name of Jesus. Say with me, every source of battle in my father's house, in my mother's family, expire in my life. I'm alive. Nah! In the name of Jesus, go ahead and expire the battle. You have an assignment ahead of you. The battle of your father's house cannot keep you in one spot. No! You are a weapon of war and a battle axe in the hands of God. Your life cannot be complicated. Shock! Say with me every complicated battle in my life. Expire my fire. Go ahead and begin to decree. Every complicated battle. Expire. 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 Shake it again, again, again. Shake it again, again, again. Shake it again, again, again. In Jesus' name, I discovered that personal battle could establish what is called hidden bondage. We are going to decree and say in the name of Jesus, every secret battle in my life that has established a hidden bondage around me. I root you out by the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and root them out. Every heat bondage around you as a result of personal battle, let it be rooted out. 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 Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands on your head. Say, my body, you are a living sacrifice that has been assigned to glorify your maker. I therefore decree and declare whatever is in you, my body, that is not agreeing with prayers, that is not agreeing with spirituality, I bind you now. Back your Lord now. Come out of my life. Go, 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 go. Say with me every food I ate in the dream or physically, wherever you are hiding in my bones, in my muscles. 
in my blood sister i bind you gather yourself now pack your load now go now go 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 Raga ta 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 ta, you go do 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 do, shake it there, shake it there, shake it there. Go, go, go. Go. Jesus name. Britain and breathe out by the fire of the Holy Ghost we drive out. Whatever is not of God in you, please breathe in and breathe out. Put your hand on your bowel, everyone, on your stomach. Take a deep breath, breathe in and breathe out by the fire of the Holy Spirit. We command every weakness injected in your system out. Yes, breathe in and breathe out. Every strange infirmity deposited in your body system to steal your prayer life. We bind it. Come out. Recruit to pass the frontiers. There is someone here, yours is not food. You woke up one day and you smell something. Since that day, you have been having some challenges with coffee. Kapora tonash. Whatever they release into your air to attack your lungs. I run them out of your body now. Go in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I breathe in the fire of God. I swallow the blood of Jesus. Whatever is not of God in my body system. Park your love. Come out. Go. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Put your hand on your head. Father, I bless your people today. Uproot from them what the enemy cast against their body. Let there be a revival that physically they will feel it. Restore prayer life. I break that spell of unusual sleep. I break that spell of manipulated stress. Your enemy can no longer rule your day. Receive capacity to influence your day. In the name of Jesus. Receive strength. There's someone here, the Lord said, your health has been restored. That pain in your chest is gone. In the name of Jesus. There's a woman here. There's an affliction that got into your throat some time ago. It's as if you are swallowing something. It's as if you are trying to vomit or something. I command that arrow shot into your throat. To establish goiter, I command it disappear. Go now. In the name of Jesus. That seed of goiter disappear now. Please speak to your body cells, everyone. Say, my cell, cooperate with me from today. Every negative cells in my body disappear. Go ahead and pray. I speak to yourselves. Agree, 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 and cooperate. Abnormal cells and bad cells in your body are commanded to disappear. I rebuke cancer and cancer symptoms by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will not be a victim of cancer. You will not be a victim of cancer. Thank you, Jesus. You are healed. 
There are two persons here. The Lord has healed your organs. Some strange symptoms within your kidneys, they have disappeared. Receive strength over your kidneys. There's one here, you have been having fainting symptoms, weakness, dizziness. Your heart is readjusted. You are healed. Thank you, Lord. Just wave your hands and appreciate the Lord. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we give you all the praises in Jesus' mighty name. And amen and amen.